January 22, 1989, the Cincinnati Bengals found themselves in Joe Robbie Stadium, Miami, preparing to take on the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 23. Let's go, Jim Scout. You ready? All pro. You bet, baby. You want to be one? I'll, be good one? I'll write a letter for you. OK. All right. Let's go. David Grant, you're no longer a tenure now. You're a sophomore, <laughs> OK? Let's go, Ricky Dixon, number one. Get your best game together today, OK? Everybody in Oklahoma's watching, I think. Do they have TVs there? Yeah. OK. Introducing the AFC champion, Cincinnati Bengals. Don't think about anything else but doing it to start the first play of the game. Just take your time getting ready. We got plenty of time. And then we'll take it to him. Coming off a 4-11 season, Bengals head coach Sam Weich was feeling the pressure. I thought there was a pretty good chance they'd fire me. We had so much pressure early on. We had to win the Hall of Fame game. I think we had to have uh, a near victory in the team scrimmage the week before the Hall of Fame game in order for them to keep me another week. I made jokes early in the year that I was on one of those seven-day renewable contracts. If we didn't make enough first downs, they were going to make a change. Sam had to start with his personal discipline. In other words, uh, eat three meals a day at a normal time. Get the staff home by 7 o'clock in the evening. You think better when you get up rested, and that was the starting point. Sam's boldest new thought involved the reassigning of roommates. We decided that some of the guys that played on defense really didn't spend enough time with the offensive players. So we tried to put a black defensive player with a white offensive player and vice versa. Not to create brand new best friends, but to create new friendships and better acquaintances so that when we got down to those goal line stands, everybody knew what was at stake in the other guy's life. And maybe it made us a little stronger team. <laughs> On opening day, Sam's theory was tested. Four times, the Phoenix Cardinals tried to score from inside the Bengals' 10-yard line. But with the game on the line and the stadium timepiece down to its final ticks, the Bengal defense persevered. So here we are, right in front of this play. Lomax is back to throw. He's in the draft, throws it away. The ball game is over, and the Bengals have opened with a... The following week, it was the offense's turn. With the four-man rush steps up in the pocket, looks, fires it upfield, it is caught by McGee. He's at the 50, down to the 40, to the 30. Three Boomer Esiason touchdown passes put big points on the board. Five, touchdown! Touchdown! Yeah. All right. But late in the game, with the Eagles in the lead, Boomer needed some big advice. Let's go with timeout, coach. Let's, let's take this over, bud. Yeah. They got goal line. They got goal line. Hurry up. All right. Let's go put regular in and go drift left and see swing. All right. All right. Regular in the game. Regular. Right, right, right. That's all right. Regular in the game. We're going to go drift left and see swing. Regular. A lot of noise down there. Eddie Brown comes in motion. Boomer's going to have to throw into the end zone. Touchdown. Right against the end line just before he was flattened. Touchdown. Tim McGee and Boomer was really hit from the blind side and he is being helped to his feet by a hey, teammate as Boomer hey, gets his Our quarterback got clubbed in the face and the neck right there. I mean, he's going to live, but that is a penalty. Boomer Esiason did much more than survive the 1988 season. He was the NFL's most valuable player, a man obsessed with victory. After our 4 11 season last year, I was coming back on a mission, so to speak. My sights were set on one thing and one thing only, and that was Miami. And I wouldn't be happy unless I got there. We've gone by the work ethic. You know, much like John F. Kennedy said, don't ask what this team can do for you. You know, what can you do for this team? <laughs> He's a star. Yeah, I wasn't going to call him that before the end of the season, but then, I, but if I don't call him that now, then people are going to think I'm stupid again. 
He's got a tremendous arm, and once he's on that field, the players respond because they know he's going to put him in the right place at the right time. Over the season's first six weeks, that place was the winner's column, and the entire pass-catching core was taking part. In week five, they beat the Raiders for the first time ever outside of Riverfront. And Boomer Esiason couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. There were a lot of people that said their coach was going to be fired, and that I would be traded, and that this team would fall apart. I thank all those people that didn't give us you know, really a chance this year because that's what has really gotten us going to and getting us to the point where we are. In week six, the final ingredient was added to this explosive offensive mix. And off goes to Icky. Left side, he is out. Touchdown! Icky Woods through the left side. That's we were sitting around, you know, just joking around, listening to some music. I said, uh, watch, when I score tomorrow, I'm going to do this crazy dance. And my mom said, boy, you better not get out there and do that dance. And, but uh, when I scored, I did the dance, and it, it kind of like took off like wildfire. I didn't, I didn't expect it to take off like it did. Nor did the Bengals expect this second-round draft pick to lead the conference in touchdowns. But with a big, fast fullback factored into an already potent attack, the Cincinnati Bengals could boast an offense without weakness. Eddie Brown goes in motion, and Esaias against a four-man rush is back to throw. Now he goes far down the field. There's Eddie Brown. Touchdown! Down to the 10-5. It's an era of maturity that is on this football team now, especially on offense. Most of us have been together for about five, six years, with the exception of uh, Icky Woods. And we're not making the mistakes. We know what it takes to win ball games, and as long as we can do that, we can go a long way. Running out now, he looks, throws into the end zone. This one is a touchdown to Eddie Brown. Boomer Esiason ran right, not the way that he could throw the ball well, but he drifted out of that pocket right, and Eddie Brown was coming right across the end line. And when he came down... Riverfront Stadium loves Cincinnati's 6-0 start. And for Sam Weich's Bengals, the best was yet to come. Number 30, Icky Woods. Rookie running back Albert Icky Woods shared his teammates' dogged determination. I didn't really start the first five, six ball games of the season, and I gradually worked my way into the lineup, and I started running hard because I had a mission, really, in the NFL to get up here and uh, prove to myself that uh, I could play at this level. I just went in there and just yeah, I went crazy. I just said, oh, this, this is my opportunity, so I have to make the best of it. His league-leading 5.3-yard rushing average came at the expense of whoever ventured into his path. James Brooks averaged only 5.1 yards per carry, but it was good enough for a trip to the Pro Bowl. Between them, they rushed for 2,000 yards, and their 29 combined touchdowns were far and away the most by any running back tandem in football. Of course, they did get a little help from their friends. Tackle Anthony Munoz, a Pro Bowler for the eighth straight year. Center Bruce Kazerski, tackled Joe Walder, guard Max Montoya, a pro bowler for the second time in his career, guard Bruce Reimers, the five principals in pro football's best offensive line. Their forte was zone blocking, blowing off the ball and controlling the man in front of them, giving Bengals ball carriers a choice of options. Their pass protection wasn't bad either, and they always gave that little extra effort which so often made the difference between success and failure.
But offense was just part of this winning story. Bengal special teams also made key contributions, such as this team record 98-yard kickoff return by Stanford Jennings. The special team's honor roll included Ricky Dixon, Barney Bussey, Ed Brady, Carl Parker, Jim Riggs, Hunter Lee Johnson, and veteran wide receiver Chris Collinsworth. Finally, it has been many, many years since the Bengals have run one back. 98 yards Woo. by Stanford Jennings. But championships are won on defense. Turnovers usually result from total team efforts. The 1988 Bengals defense had a knack for making them happen. I think the one reason why the turnovers are happening is because we have a lot of people flying around now instead of having two or three people get into the ball. When the ball's in the air, everybody in the secondary is around the football. When the ball's on the ground, you have all 11 guys flying to the football, everybody's hitting. Now the ball's bouncing our way instead of bouncing the other way. Stone out the near side. Brister goes back to throw, and he is hit and spun down. Loses the ball, and the Bengals have it. He was hit yes. from behind. And David... The hitting began up front with nose tackle Tim Crumry, a former 10th round draft choice, who finally was voted a long overdue trip to the Pro Bowl. Surrounding Crumry were some of the hardest working, least known defenders in football. Down lineman Eddie Edwards, David Grant, and Jim Scow. Pass rush specialists Jason Buck and Skip McClendon. Veteran linebacker Reggie Williams could still crumble quarterbacks. Leon White. Carl Zander and Joe Kelly could clean up the rest. Kozar is going to throw. He is back. Looks. Dumps it out of. Yeah. Ball. Intercepted by yeah. Fulcher. Oh, he oh, tried to get it. A little dunk pass out to Monday. Free safety David Fulcher was one of two Pro Bowlers from the Bengals secondary. Cornerback Eric Thomas also made the grade, and together with Solomon Wilcox and Lewis Billups. They were the last line of defense on a defensive unit that engineered its own magical form of mayhem. Moon with a play action fake is back to throw. Leo Barker knocks the ball out of his hands and catches in the air. 2015, dead five, touchdown. He hit Moon's arm on the blitz. The ball popped up into the air, and he ran it in for a touchdown. Over the final three months of the regular season, one game each month loomed as a must-win situation for the Bengals. The first took place on October 23rd against the Houston Oilers. We've been playing very tight-knit football this season. Our team's been close. There's been that family atmosphere, that overused cliche that um, everybody tries to use, but not everybody means it. The second big game took place on November 27th against Marv Levy's Red Hot Buffalo Bills. Oh, James Brooks gets the second touchdown of the afternoon. Four down his throat before the half. Messiah gives the ball off to Icky. Left side, touchdown, Icky Woods. But the biggest game of all was still to come. They've got a second down and nine looking at him right here. Boomer of play action off to his left. Look wide open. Field. There's the man down there, Eddie Brown. On December 17th, the Bengals and Redskins went into overtime. Come on, defense! Get it, get it! Doug Williams goes back to throw. He is hit! He is hit and dropped! Harry, Barney Bussey got him at the 19 yard line. Who's ball? Like yeah, the Bengals ball! Goals. Bengals ball! <laughs> at stake was the division title and home field advantage right through the AFC playoffs.
great love for each fraternal love right now. It ain't ever going to be broken. Good there won't be another minute like this one, guys. We may top it, but there won't be a first time like this one is. Let's don't forget this feeling. Let's don't forget that we're just getting started. We're kicking into the second half right yes, now. Sir. Bengals, Superdash, here with Team and E, we got them all. Let's go, Bengals, we all the way to the Super Bowl. Let's go, Bengals. In the opening round of the playoffs, the Bengals ran the ball almost at will on the Seattle Seahawks. 72 yards for James Brooks. 126 yards for Icky Woods. Seattle Seahawks managed just 18 yards rushing. Three back to throw. Going upfield. It is tipped away and intercepted by Wilcox. Wilcox running. He gave the ball to Fulcher. And Fulcher is running and he gets down to the 43, but the rolling the ball was dead. This is this is what happiness is about. This is what you play for. One more game and we finish it off. Watch out, hit him! Hit him! Hit him! The following week, the Buffalo Bills felt the sound and fury of Cincinnati's home field advantage. You better be on, baby. These were men on a mission. The far side of the field, they put another wide receiver. One running back in behind. Kelly goes back to throw. Figures it downfield. It's intercepted at the 30. Run it in. Run it in. Run it in. Run it in. At the 15. At the 10. At the 5. Dives to the 4. Phillips. Kelly, 16 to 17 ball. 16 to 17 ball. Seventy-seven halfback circle. Shorty touchdown. Come on, boom, boom, let's go. Play action fake. Boomer back to throw. Looks in the end zone. Lobs it off in a flat touchdown. Oh, what a fine fake by Boomer. And Brooks just caught that rainbow over the left corner. Good job, Jimmy Brooks. That's the way to play big time ball, man. Before Kings Island, there was one more score to settle. Sure, so the wind must be blowing up that way. 
It'll come down to Jennings at the 7. Up to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Go, Go, But on this day, Bengals' joy was tempered by unexpected hardships, not to mention missed opportunities. Breach's third field goal gave the Bengals a fourth quarter lead. Unfortunately, Joe Montana and the 49ers weren't quite finished. Bill Walsh's team ruled the day. But Sam White's Cincinnati Bengals came back further in one season than any team in NFL history. These were proud men, men of substance and character. The 1988 Cincinnati Bengals, men on a mission. I'm, I am happy for you like I've never been. Believe me. Congratulations. This is yours. You deserve it. That was a good game, huh? <laughs>